Hello, brothers, sisters, friends, welcome to our midweek service. And now we're going to talk about today about character and relationship. The title of my lesson is Small Pocket Change. You might be wondering what small pocket change. This is what we are talking about. Coins. Small change, $2. And you might be thinking, what's all this about? And how the small pocket change has to do with character and relationship. Small pocket change. It might be very insignificant and small, but do you know it's actually quite valuable. I remember uh, just last year, you know, when I went to my closet and I discovered a jar of small change. And at first I thought, ah, the small amount. Then I gave it to my son. My son said, let's sort it out, put it in the bank. So I told him, okay, you go ahead and sort it out and whatever you get, it's all yours. And you know what I found out when he came back? He said, Dad, it's actually a few hundred dollars. It's like, oh my goodness. Well, it's his gain since he sought out a small pocket change. You know, it looks small, insignificant, but quite valuable at times, right? Or it could be very important to us at those times where we need it. Have you ever been caught in a time where all of a sudden you open up your wallet and there's no money? Well, guess where you go? The small pocket change, right? Like in the old days when we drive through the toll before we, uh, when we are using the cart as well as the coins, you know, sometimes the card, the touch and go, do not have any money. So, what do we need? Small pocket change. You take out your small pocket change to pay the toll. So you can see, small change might be insignificant, but it can really get you through some very tight spot. The concept is this. In our lives, just like the small change, we need to always have something available in our lives so that we can always be available to give and to serve. So let us read from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 15. Paul says we must have feet fitted with readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. So the Bible says here, in our relationship, whether it's leadership or relationship with our family and friends, we must always be ready. Even though it's small, in our heart, available and ready to serve and to give. Here are some website, CSS Corp. It's an IT company. It says, always ready to serve with an always available infrastructure and concierge. Can you imagine? Computer breaks down, server breaks down. That happens to us all the time. What do we need? We need that our vendor must be always ready to serve us, to help us. Otherwise, we're stuck. Even though computers, IT our, works very fast, but if we're stuck, we cannot go forward. Here is a restaurant, Blue Mist. Always ready to serve a lovely breakfast with a smile. When you wake up from Airbnb or hotel, what do you want? Breakfast! Always ready. Imagine coming down from your hotel and the breakfast is not done. You will be grumpy and complaining, where is my cup of coffee? Ah, 
is from the Minnesota National Guard. Once in service, always ready to serve. Well, I'm glad the National Guard or the Army are always ready to serve us, to protect us when they are danger. This is from a mining company. We are always ready to serve you. Can you imagine? Even a mining company has the same motto, always ready to serve. Strange. And of course, you find Jesus himself understood this concept. Always ready to serve. Something in there, even though small, available to give and to help the people around us. Let's read in Matthew chapter 14, verse 15 to 17. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. And Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have only here five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. And of course, we know what happened here. It's the Jesus has been out all day teaching, healing. And at the end of the day, the disciples were all tired and ready to go back, have a proper meal, rest. Then Jesus noticed that they were at a remote place and he said, Hey, I see them, the people around me, they need to have some food. Are you ready to serve Oh my goodness, the disciples like, Jesus, we don't have anything. How can we serve the people around us? Jesus says, even though it's small, we must be ready to serve. What do you have? We only have five loaves of bread and two fish. For Jesus, that's good enough. Even though it's small, Jesus could make it big so that they can be ready to serve. You see, Jesus also expects us to always have something available in our heart to serve the people around us. Do you have enough small pocket change available for your relationship? So often we expand out everything, right? Just like in our wallet, we spend everything and we don't have anything else to give. We feel tired to give. No more pocket change. You know, we always need to have something small available in our heart, ready to give to the people around us. How do you know that you are ready to give to the people around you? Interruptions. That's how you know. Because in our life, there will always be interruption. There will always be brothers, sisters, your family members, your colleagues, will come when you are busy working and they will interrupt you. I know for myself, that's something that I hate the most. You know, when I'm doing my work, typing away, right? Busy. And then all of a sudden, Patrice will come. Honey, can you do something for me? It's like, ah, right? Do you, do you have the same feeling? But you know what? God, the Bible always remind me. Yes, you can tell your wife, wait a little bit, but I'm ready to serve you. So, do you have something in reserve so that you can give when it is needed? Or when God opens the door for you, we can walk through it. You know, especially through this time in COVID-19, uh, there are many needs, many people who need help or even spiritually, people want to study the Bible and know God. They are desperate. And God opens the door for you. Are you ready to serve? Or do you see them as another form of interruption in your life? We need, as disciples, always to be ready to serve, even though it is small, not big, but in our heart available to help the people around us always 
ready to serve. Small pocket change. Here are some practical points for you. Three actions to help you to be ready, always ready to give and serve. And this will also be accompanied by some verses that you can read along for your further studies and discussion in your group. First action, attitude or willingness. Mark chapter 1, verse 40 to 42. Our attitude is the most important. Willingness to serve starts from the heart. Situation with Jesus, a leper came to Jesus asking Jesus to help him. And the leper asked, are you willing to cleanse me? And Jesus, always willing, saying, I am willing. He is always having that attitude of willingness to serve. Second action that will help you is preparedness in all situation. We already read that verse, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 15, where we have to have the shoe fitted with readiness to serve. You know, in all our relationship, situation, and life, there will always be new situation, new encounters in our life. For example, growing up, you become an adult. That, that's a new situation. Or you go on dates. That's a new situation. Or after you go on dates, you get married. That's another new situation. And if you're married, some of you have children. Another new situation. Or you go out and get a job or get a new career in this COVID-19. And that's another new, new situation. Or in the church, you're asked to lead. You've never led before. New situation. Or mentoring someone. New situation. You know, with all this new situation, are you prepared? Do you go in there blindly wishing, oh, by instinct, God will tell me what to do? No, we need to read up, study, search the scriptures, go to website, read up books, so that we can be more prepared in this new situation to serve the people around us. And then the third action, replenish your heart. That is very important. Basically, what is saying? Self-care. Take care of who? You. Yes, you. You know the Bible talks about that? We must also take care of us. Mark chapter 12, verse 31. What does it say? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you don't love yourself, you don't take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of the people around you? So Jesus is not saying don't take care of the people around us, but take care of yourself as well so that you can take care of the people around you. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Replenish yourself. How can we do that? Number one, most importantly, let God refresh our heart. Let God put in those small change into our heart. Mark chapter 1, verse 21 to 39. Secondly, we need to have other people around us. Let other people come into our lives to refresh us. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. And finally, do something fun for yourself every week. Mark chapter 6, verse 30 to 31. Yes, do something what? Fun for who? Yourself. That is so important. Sometimes we are out there, give, 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 serve, serve, serve. But we don't replenish ourselves and do something fun for ourselves so that we can have the energy, the strength, the small change to give to the people around us. So brothers, sisters, friends, small change, small pocket change. Though small, looks insignificant, but can be very valuable and important so that we can always have something available to give, to serve, and to help the people around us. Thank you very much. Hope you have a great week serving and giving to the people around you so that you yourself can be replenished 
in your heart. Bye.